if we're going to account for the electric and magnetic loss in our model, we need to figure out where the sigma and the sigma star terms show up in Maxwell's equations. The one-dimensional model we've created so far solves Ampere's and Faraday's laws in lossless materials. But since electromagnetic wave propagation is governed by Ampere's and Faraday's law, if the sigma and the sigma star values of a material, if they impact how electromagnetic waves propagate, then we must be able to account for sigma and sigma star in Ampere's and Faraday's laws. First, let's consider Ampere's law. This is the form of Ampere's law that we started with when we were modeling free space. However, you may remember from the FDTD1 module that circulating magnetic fields may be generated not only by time-changing electric fields, but also by moving electrons. Whether the electrons are flowing in a wire as part of a current, maybe because there's an antenna at that location, or because there are electrons flowing because there is a conductive material at that location and there are electric fields in the vicinity of, of that material. Taking this into account, the more general form of Ampere's law that includes the flow of electrons, which is given by J current density term, and we can take both of these into account if we add that the rotating magnetic fields can be generated by flowing electrons, the current density, or also from the time-changing electric fields. Then we can use m the microscopic form of Ohm's law and we can relate the current density J to the electric field. So this is going to be equal to sigma E. So now we have an expression that the curl of H at a specific location in space is equal to sigma E plus epsilon dE dt. As a result, the free space one-dimensional form of Ampere's law that we used earlier for the Z polarized wave propagating in the X direction would change from this to now we're going to have on the left for the curl of H we're just going to have dy dx and now on the right we're going to have sigma times EZ since we only have the Z component of the electric field and then epsilon dEZ dt. Now when we applied central differencing to the free space version of Ampere's law in module FDTD2 we centered the partial derivatives around n plus one half and also location i. Now we're going to apply central differencing to this new form of Ampere's law in the same manner. So we're again going to use center the partial derivatives around n plus a half and i. So if we do this on the left side we're going to get hy and um, we're going to get n plus one half and this is a spatial derivative so I'm going to go i plus one half so half of a grid cell to in a positive uh, x direction and then i minus a half half a grid cell in the negative x direction and these are both at the same time step and on the right side we have sigma ez and here we're just going to have i and n plus one half where the partial derivatives are centered because there's no partial derivative occurring there and plus epsilon and now we have a partial time derivative so both of these are going to be at location i but I'm going to go half a time step into the future and half a time step into the past which is just n and all this is divided by delta t. Next we want to, as before, solve for the future value and the future value here is EZ n plus 1 at position i. And so we want to rearrange this term now so that we can solve for this, this value. After solving for the future value of EZ just by rearranging terms, I get what's written here. I've moved terms around so that you can see that the form of this equation is very similar 
to the electric field update equation that we had earlier for lossless materials. We had the previous value of Ez, the same location, and the same coefficient, and the subtraction of the two neighboring H fields. The only difference is now we have this extra term at the end. Now look at this equation. Can you program this equation into your computer the way it is written? Certainly we can probably program this part because we've already done that. But what about this last term? Can we do this? Or if not, what can we do about it?